this one's going to be a tough one um, uh, about Mike Bickle and the recent allegations. I just want to share my thoughts, um, mostly for my friends who are asking and thinking, but also for the wider audience out there. Um, so recently, uh, a public statement concerning allegations on Mike Bickle was released on October 28th. Um, if you don't know what's going on, it was released by Dwayne Roberts, who is a former executive of the leadership team and board member of IHOP KC. Brian Kim, also a former executive leadership team and board member of IHOP KC. And Wes Martin, a former pastor of Forerunner Christian Fellowship, which is part of IHOP, and former vice president of student affairs at IHOP U. So those are three guys respected in that community who are there for very long time serving at the highest echelons of leadership there, right? And they wrote this article. I'll read parts of it to you in case you haven't read it. This is online. Uh, and the point of saying who they are is that this isn't from outsiders accusing Mike. This is three people who respected him, learned from, mentored by him, and they thought this was seriousness, serious enough to bring forward. They wrote, a few days ago, we made the leadership team of the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, IHOP KC, aware of serious allegations spanning several decades concerning its founder, Mike Bickle. Without going into details to predict the privacy of the victim's identities, we have found these allegations of clergy sexual abuse by Mike Bickle to be credible and longstanding. Everything I know about these guys is they don't have an axe to grind, but maybe they do. Because um, the question is, is this true or not true, right? Um to be credible and long standing. But I mean, that's intense that three of these guys, all on the executive leadership team, are all coming forward to say this. Uh, it lends to the belief that this is uh, real. Because I don't think they do this just haphazardly. Uh, so it says the credibility of these allegations is not based on any one experience or any one victim, but on the collective and corroborating testimony of the experience of several victims. Prior to meeting with the leadership team of IHOP, we attempted to bring the allegations and the testimony of one of the victims directly to Mike Bickle in the spirit of Matthew 18, 15 to 17. Now, I don't know if a victim was there or not. Um, I was trying to understand that in the way they wrote this. However, we were repeatedly rebuffed by Mike Bickle and we were refused any sort of meeting. Instead, Mike used manipulating and intimidating tactics towards the victim's that makes it sound like they were there to isolate them and discredit them or maybe just in reference to them. I don't know. To avoid further wounding of victims, we met with several members of IHOP KC's executive leadership team. Sounds like that's probably Isaac Bennett, David Slyker, and Stuart Greaves, and I don't know who else is on the team. Um, there we shared testimonies of these victims of Mike's inappropriate words and actions. When these allegations were brought to our attention, we were shocked. We could never have imagined that inappropriate conduct with women as something we would ne ever need to be concerned about. These The allegations seemed out of character to the man we thought we knew. So it shocked them. And it's sad to hear them say the man they thought they knew. Like they're sounds like they're deeply hurt by this, that what they believed is a lie or a sham. But they were so serious we could not ignore them. The scriptures inform us that leaders in the church, especially those who teach the word of God, are held to a higher standard and stricter judgment. We believe that Mike Bickle's actions were not above reproach and fall short of biblical standards for leaders in the church. To be clear, the allegations made about Mike Bickle's misconduct were sexual in nature where the, na the marriage covenant was not honored. Furthermore, the allegations made also reveal that Mike Bickle used his position of spiritual authority over the victims to manipulate them. We do not share this process to fill in salacious details, but to protect the integrity of the victims and their experiences that were shared. We appeal to you to refrain from using names of any victims. These are women who have always been viewed. So it sounds like they know these women who have always been viewed as credible, trustworthy, and courageous. None of these victims had any intention to punish Mike Bickle. And they had nothing to gain by sharing their experience except the pursuit of truth, repentance, mercy, and grace. Uh, Signed here by Dwayne Roberts, Brian Kim, and Wes Martin, who I mentioned earlier. So heavy stuff. Um, uh, especially tough for me because, like, Mike was a hero of mine. Um, and A, at the outset, of this, we, sh we don't know the truth yet. Like, we're so far away. I live in California. I don't know any of these people personally. I've met Mike in person, drove around for a week when he came out to Bethel. Um, and I've been to IHOP. I was there in 2007. Uh, 
I took Alan Hood's class, um, uh, not the life of Christ, but um, Christology too, or something like that. And so I took some other classes also. I don't remember them off the top of my head. I was there for a few months and I was considering becoming a IHOP staff uh, intercessor at the time. I decided not to at that time and I moved back out to Redding, California. Um, but I've I have listened to him since high school. Before I even knew, I was listening to Mike Bickle. And uh, I was in high school in 2000, 1998 to 2002 or whatever it was. I have literally listened to thousands of his sermons. Um, I have read probably every, close to every book he's written. Um, so I'm very familiar and I was, uh, I'm very grateful for his teaching ministry and the revelation on um the praying church that he has. And I think one of the questions that comes up is if this is true, if the allegations are true, does that mean everything Mike has ever said is garbage? Um, I don't think it is. Um, I think that I think people are mixed bags. Um, and I know that one of the problems with the structure of the church today is that we idolize men. We, we have these big mega churches and we put this one dude who basically builds the thing and has lots of fame. Everybody shaw so wow by the revelation or whatnot. And then they all come, and they flock to it and it gets big. And man, that guy's so incredible. He's so awesome. And we don't really know him, right? We hear their teaching week in and week out. We see what they, but we don't know them on a real level. We don't. And, and that's a problem. That's a bummer that churches, that structure, because in the early church, it wasn't with was small home groups and they knew each other, Right. They, they weren't impressed by Paul. That's what he says. He says, well, I'm in flesh with you. You think I'm weak. Uh, they weren't impressed by him the way we're impressed by Mike Bickle or uh, at Reading, uh, Bill Johnson or something. Uh, these were just other men in their midst. And because of it, uh, when you're in a small church, you don't get this idolization of these people as you do in this case. And then if people uh, stumble and fall, it's easier to reconcile those things in a small community and to really be fully accepted when you've repented and you've uh, dealt with your stuff in that community. Whereas when you're in these big settings like this, there's always going to be that lack of trust for for everybody because we're never going to get to know Mike on a personal level and know like how much was BS and how much was true. Like we're never going to get to know that. Like, um, But I can just assume for myself that in my own areas that I've struggled in that I do have real um, genuineness, even though I may stumble in this area, and that sometimes they don't overlap. And that's not to say that we can't be corrupted entirely by things. I think we can, but I think most times it's a mixed bag where people, we really do good sometimes, and we really do bad at other times. And we get this mixed effect because of it. And so for me, uh, I'm not throwing out all the teachings Mike's ever taught as if it's all just garbage. Uh, the the manipulation though uh, spiritual authority I think is a, I think that um, bothers me more if this is true right we're all assuming if this is true then the sexual misconduct the sexual misconduct like uh, not making an excuse for it not saying it's okay at all um, I think it's terrible and it really hurts people but I think people are sexual creatures and it's not surprising to me that somebody would stumble in that area. Um, I think it's human at some level, right? Uh, but to manipulate and use your authority and your power to coerce people, um, that to me is a grosser thing to do. Um, and in fact, it made me think I listened, not this, I, I did listen to the clips of this last Friday's EGS service, but the week before, Mike was teaching and he was talking about how accusation might be coming and how to have mercy and on others because we need mercy. And like, it just makes you wonder if he was preaching that because he knew something was going to come down. We don't know. I don't know. Maybe these are all lies. I don't know. Uh, but if it was manipulative to preach that sermon in preparation for you knew it was coming to protect yourself, um, that to me is a gross behavior to do. Um, and, and sometimes in the church I grew up in, I, I definitely saw the senior pastor abuse uh, his position of authority and protect his own at the cost of uh, the congregants. And I think that's um, ungodly and not the way Christ would have us do. Christ would sacrifice himself for the lowliest person. 
Um, so I, I'm definitely not under the opinion that um, t- we are to protect the Lord's anointed at any cost. Uh, I think people abuse that passage all the time. Uh, so I definitely don't fall into that. But I do think we are supposed to love people and forgive them no matter who they are. Like we need to love these victims and care for them truly. And I think that's going to require transparency and holding to account. Um, but at the same time, I don't think we're supposed to hate Mike Bickle and hope he falls. I mean, I know there's so many people that bash IHOP and hate the movement, hate the prayer movement, and they think he's a heretic and all this stuff. And they're probably just gloating at this fall, if it turns out it's true. Um, I don't think that's a godly spirit either. I don't think we should ever glory in someone's fall. Uh, we should be grieved, grieved that it hurt people, grieved that this is the case, grieved that um, the pain that he must be feeling and his family's feeling right? Uh, The shock that everybody who's followed his teaching that they're dealing with and the victims, of course. I mean, uh, we don't know who they are, so it's hard to imagine them. It's easier when you have a face and then you can really actually show true compassion to them. Um, But right now they're anonymous, which is fine. Um, I wouldn't want it to be known about me if someone sexually abused me like that. Um, Yeah. So those are some of my thoughts on this. Um, you know, the other one is how should the church handle this? And one of the videos I saw someone had videotaped that first Friday night when the, uh, Stuart Greaves, David Slyker, it looked like Lenny LaGuardia, I think was up there and Isaac Bennett. And then uh, at the end of the video, they were kind of saying, it, and Dean Briggs, who was like, I don't know what his position was at IHOP, but he was like on the upper echelons of leadership there too. Apparently he's not anymore. Maybe he, I think it's somewhere said he quit in September, but, uh, he got up in question and said, you guys aren't being transparent, basically. And he says, like, it's well-meaning BS what you're doing. Um, that's that's disturbing, too, that somebody who's on higher levels thinks that they're uh, uh, not being transparent. And I, I get it. Like, man, if you were having to walk that road to Stuart Greaves or David Slyker, like, what a hard road to walk. Like, how much do you share? How much do you not? I mean, like, because – we are supposed to love covers a multitude of sins and we are supposed to care. We're not supposed to just do what people demand of us, right? Like we're living by God's standard, not the world's standards. And we're not under the compulsion of men. Um, so how to walk this out, um, I think it's difficult and how much to share and what not to share, uh, is a difficult thing, but I think transparency is going to be needed. And I think they're going to have to share more than is being shared, but maybe they're waiting to find out what's actually true. Uh, no point in uh, spreading a whole bunch of stuff you don't know is true. Uh, wait for it to be de- found out that it's true. Um, give Mike a chance, if it's true, to repent and say his piece before everybody and then uh, let it all be known. I think that'd be the clearest way and the best way for Mike even to be better and for the victims, right? We They need real justice. They don't need this swept under the rug if this really happened. That is doing them no good. And Jesus doesn't favor Mike over the victims. He loves them both equally. He wants what's best for both of them, and so should we. Um, and that looks like showing mercy to all and actually caring. And um, So I think they're in a tough situation. How did they handle this? Um yeah, another one that it, it, me and my wife were talking about is that it kind of exposes um, the pain that we have when this kind of thing comes out, kind of shows our dependency on certain leaders in the church for what's true. And uh, we idolize men, right? We put them in that that upper, maybe not right at God, but man, they know everything. They know what God's like. Surely everything they say is true. And our, our rock should be the scriptures and Christ alone. It shouldn't be in any man or hope. So like if this shakes you and what you believe in, if you have to go question, like, man, I don't know about this, then you've been building on the wrong foundation. It shouldn't be built on Mike. It shouldn't be built on any pastor, or any spiritual leader, no matter how amazing you think they are. It should be built on Christ alone so that it doesn't matter what man may fall, you would still stand strong. The verse that came to mind for me when I was thinking about this, and it's it's, it's out of context a little, uh, but it's Romans 3, uh, uh, three and four says, what if some were unfaithful? Speaking of Israelites here, but does their faithfulness nullify the faithfulness of God? By no means. Let God be true, though everyone were a liar. And I just think of that like, let's say Mike, worst case scenario, Mike's completely fake. Everything is a lie, blah, blah, blah. Let every man be a liar. Let everybody 
everybody it doesn't matter if everybody on this planet's a liar god is still true his word is still true this doesn't shake the foundations of christianity maybe for the week yeah and that's a that's a real bummer about when a later that has a huge following falls because uh, there's a whole bunch of weak believers out there who didn't uh, found themselves on the rock on christ alone and then they're going to be shaken uh, so I think that's one of the tragedies in these situations. And I think it's a tragedy to see other parts of the church gloating and gleeful over something like this. Um, but it also makes me think how much better the home church model is than these mega thing. And I really appreciate the prayer movement. I'm all about, I'm all about us devoting ourselves to prayer. I think everybody's an intercessor. I don't think that's just for like weird grandmas over in the corner. Right. I think that's for everybody. Um, Right, so just the church, the home church model is just it's just better in so many ways. Um, just this idolization of people and being able to solve these problems and restore people in a real context amongst others and be fully accepted. Mike's never going to be fully accepted again, whether it comes out true or not true. Some people are never going to hear the end of the story and they just heard this, and that's going to be their takeaway. Or maybe it comes out worse. You know, I've heard rumors that it's worse than what we think. Um, maybe it is. I don't know at this place i'll wait to see um but yeah i mean that's pretty much most of my thoughts uh, i think we should be slow to judge especially the distance we are we're, we're not getting the inside scoop i'm not hearing directly from the victims i can't assess this stuff i haven't talked with mike i don't get to see how he responds how he's reacting i mean in this document it says he uh, rebuffed them and used manipulating and intimidating tactics towards the victims i mean that's somebody's interpretation of what happened right like I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just like, I would like to know exactly what he said, how his face, demeanor looked, so I could judge it for myself. Um, but we don't get those details. So I just, my caution is at a distance, we need to be careful and to not judge uh, too quickly. And at the end of the day, we need to forgive and we need to love and we need to pray for people's reconciliation that they really know Jesus. Um, and I'm also reminded that like, of my own fall in this, like, we stand here and we judge Mike and judge everybody. And I'm not saying we shouldn't call it as it is. I'm saying we need to be reminded that we're just as capable of sinning in that way of committing gross, heinous sins that violate others. We're all capable of it. And we've all done it at some level, right? We may not have the stage and we may not have got uh, publicly shamed as Mike is getting, um, but we've all done this stuff. And so just as we've been shown mercy by Christ, we should show mercy to others. Uh, and at the same time, that doesn't mean neglecting the victims or uh, discrediting them or anything. Until we know the details, we don't know. We don't know how this is paying out. So we just need to be careful and be slow and trust God in the process and not let our faith be shaken because of these uh, allegations. Um, yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. I'll be around. I'll be thinking about this, chewing on it. It's hard to stop thinking about. All right. I'll see you guys. Bye.